Luke, John, Acts. Thank God we have a prayer hearing and prayer answering God. The Lord's been so much better to us than any of us deserve. He's been, he's been so good to this church. Amen. Now, if you have Acts, turn to Acts chapter 3. And I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the clock. I'm going to do the best we can. I've got a number, number of things we'll try to get done. Um, I'm, but I, I'm going to try to preach the word, be faithful to my Lord, be faithful to you as a shepherd, and to try to, to feed you the word of God uh, tonight the Holy Spirit. Uh, works. And I hope you get a little bit of encouragement uh, tonight from the Word of God. I'm glad to be saved. Amen. And we're going to look at something tonight that is not about salvation directly, but it, but it sure makes a good illustration uh, of what happened when you got saved. Amen. So if you take your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 3 and stand with me, please, in reverence for the reading of the Word of God. I'm going to do my best to just give you a few brief thoughts from this passage, and they'll be simple, short, and hopefully will uh, will help us. And then I'd like to encourage you during the invitation time to give thanks to the Lord to, for what He's done for you. And join me in uh, in praising God for His wonderful salvation. Acts three one says, "Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour." And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was He which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto Him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And His name, through faith in His name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by Him hath given Him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. We're going to pause there. I'd like to ask you to look once again for our text verse at verse number 6 where the Bible says then Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk may the Lord bless his word to our hearts tonight will you join me in prayer Heavenly Father please bless the Word of God to our hearts tonight. Thank you for the songs of Zion. Thank you for the zeal of the people. Thank you for the song you put in our heart. Thank you for uh, those who made it here in spite of the weather. Father, we pray for a few of our people that are under the weather uh, tonight, having difficulty, uh, that you'd help each one of them. And now, Father, I pray for the power of God to move in our hearts that will not meet in vain but that we'll leave here better off than when we came in. 
that if anyone here is unsaved, that today would be the day of salvation. And Christian people would be stirred. That visitors would be motivated to move forward in their Christian lives toward baptism, church membership. And that all of us might serve you better who know you. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Won't you be seated, please? Some people really, really enjoy finding out as much as they can about the historical and geographical information about anything that they read in the Bible. Uh, one, one thing that I read that was quoting a historian named Josephus, some of you have heard of him, said that the gate uh, was the one called Nicanor or another gate called Susan. And that's, it was supposed to have been lavish, supposed to have been splendid, made of Corinthian brass, a very valuable metal, and really something uh, of, a, of a landmark to be able to see. But to me, all of that stuff is just ornamental. Amen. What was important was God showed up Amen. at that particular place at that time. Yeah. And a sinner received a touch from heaven. A sinner received a touch from Almighty God. I'm not going to give this to you as the points for my message. But for those of you who think you might ever uh, want to have a devotion with your spouse, with your children, with a co-worker or whatever, let me give you something that you can uh, use sometime to look at this passage with some L's in it, okay? Number one, the first L, this is not the message, first L is lame in verse 2, a certain man lame from his mother's womb. Uh, the second L is also in verse 2, and that was he was laid uh, daily. Uh, the third L that I want to point out to you is a look in verse 4. Peter said, look on us. The next L that I want to point out to you is in verse 7. Now, I don't know about you, but what I do sometimes with something like this when I see it, I'll underline the words and I'll use my ruler and I'll draw a line between each one of them and it looks pretty neat there. But there's an L there in verse 7 of lifted. He took him by the right hand and lifted. And then there's another L in verse 8, and he leaping. What a blessing there. A little outline for you that's right there in your Bible. And it's alliterated by God Almighty. But what I want to do is I want to say that while this is not an example of some lost man getting saved, okay? This isn't about somebody hearing the gospel, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and getting saved. You will find those throughout the book of Acts. This is about a man getting healed. And no doubt, uh, it was a spiritual as well as a physical experience for him. But in this miraculous physical healing for him, we see some lessons that I think ought to cause you to rejoice in what God has done for you. And you can see you spiritually pictured by this man here in Acts chapter 3. And as he was healed physically, you were healed spiritually when you trusted Jesus Christ Amen. as your Savior. Amen. The first of the four things that I'm going to give to you this evening is number one, by the way, the message is titled, A Touch from Heaven. A Touch from Heaven. You know what America needs? America needs a touch from heaven. Amen. Amen. You know what our, our churches need? We need a touch from heaven. Yes. There's nothing wrong with you and what's going on in your life that couldn't be fixed with you getting in contact with God Amen. and you experiencing a touch from heaven. Mm -hmm. Men and women that are married, they need a touch from heaven to make their home into a paradise. Children need a touch from heaven. Pastors need a touch from heaven. Deacons, Sunday school teachers, choir members, special singers need the touch of God upon them. We all need a touch from heaven, don't we? That's what I want to uh, bring out to you tonight, but I want to think specifically with you about some areas in which this can remind you of how that you got saved. This is not an illustration of salvation as far as this man 
getting saved, but it sure does give you a picture or an illustration of how you get saved in the New Testament times. First of all, notice the man's deadness. His deadness. The Bible says, And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And in illustrating his problem and how he was as, as, as far as him being able to do something, he was impotent, he was lame. I don't know if you remember that the Bible says of Abraham with regard to him being able to do what he wanted to do and have children. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that Abraham, as far as that goes, the Bible says his body was as good as dead. Have you ever heard anybody say that? You're as good as dead. Well, the Bible says that about Abraham. And he was dead in the sense that he wasn't able uh, to produce. And God moved on the scene. Changed it. Hallelujah. But the thing about this man's deadness is a picture of, of you as a dead, lost, hell-bound sinner when the Lord showed up. A few things about this man. Number one, he was bedridden. Uh, his deadness was seen by the fact that he just could not do anything on his own. He had no power. A lost man has no power of God to help him do the things that a Christian had. A lost man can read the verse, but only a saved man can say, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want. He leadeth me. He feedeth me. He uh, calls me to rest. He, he always is with me. And I'm telling you that a lost man does not have all of that. He has to you know, he can say he's a self-made man. And the truth is, he's without God in this present world. He was bedridden from birth. You know what that reminds me of? When it says he's, he's lame from birth, he was bedridden from birth. That reminds me of a person by his natural state is born in sins. Yeah. You're born physically lame, you might say, dead in trespasses and sin. The Bible says in Psalm 58, 3, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. Second thing about his deadness was he was not only bedridden from birth, but he was born or carried about by another. He had no power uh, to go anywhere at all. Unsaved people think that they are doing their own choices. They don't want to be uh, burdened down with the things of Christianity that they would look upon as chains. You know, because you save people, uh, you don't go to the bars. Right. Yeah. You save people, you don't get hooked on drugs. You save people don't go fornicate. You save people don't gamble and do these different things. And an uh, unsaved man, he sees that and he thinks, well, I can't do that. And so he, he's in his dead situation. Uh, he thinks that you are uh, going to chain him down if he becomes a Christian. But the fact is, is he is unable to do anything. He has to be born by another. Our Bible says that he was carried in verse 2. Unsaved people don't understand this. They don't realize this. But they are led just like we saved people are led. What I mean by that is, every saved person, the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. You and I may not always follow that leadership, but there is within us the Spirit of God. He came in when you trusted Christ as your Savior, and you were born again. You were born again of the Spirit. Likewise, unsaved people, have a spirit in them. Ephesians 2 that talks about how that you are dead in trespasses and sins. It says you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the powers of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So again, I tell you, if you ever have some unsaved person seem to have an unusual animosity toward you, you need to understand that they have an unclean spirit in them. It's the spirit of the dark one. It's the spirit of the devil. Jesus said to some people one time, He said, Ye are of your father, the devil. And then He said, And the lust of your father ye will do. Now, 
So keep that in mind about your neighbor. Keep that in mind about your co-worker. You say, I didn't do anything to deserve what the treatment that I'm getting from this person. You don't have to. If you're saved, uh, the devil inside that person hates you. And so unsaved people are carried about. This man was born. He was carried about by another. And unsaved people are led by the devil. And he was even uh, brought daily to church. Well, it wasn't a New Testament church. But it was the equivalent in the Old Testament time frame. He was brought daily to the temple. Trying to get help. Trying to get a blessing. And he went there over and over and over. And he left empty. He left without getting what he needed most. He needed to be delivered from that impotence. He needed to be delivered from that lameness. He needed to be delivered from that deadness. That's a good picture of what you are if you're unsaved today. Dead, lame, powerless. But then he got a touch from heaven. That's the man's deadness. In verses 3 through 7, the second thing that we see is the man's deliverance. Praise God. You know what the word deliverance is an equivalent of? It's the, the same thing as being saved. One of the synonyms for salvation, not the only synonym, salvation can refer to a number of things. It can, be, it can refer to being rescued. It can, be, it can refer to being preserved and other things. But one of the things that the word salvation is used to represent is to be delivered from something. Now his deliverance, of course, was from his lameness. And I want you to notice that it was conditional. He looked to Peter and John thinking that he might receive alms, but they said to him, look on us. And the good thing about it was it makes me remember uh, Moses when he, when he saw the burning bush. God didn't speak to him when he first saw the burning bush, but when he turned aside to see the burning bush and say, what's this about? The Bible says that when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, then the Lord said, and the Lord started uh, speaking to him. This man was receptive. He looked for alms, but they said to him, look on us, and then they uh, told him, that they were going to give him something else. Now, my friend, what he got was not, again, it's not the exact same. He didn't hear the gospel. Nobody said, this is what happened. Jesus died for you. He was buried. He rose again the third day. Faith for your sins. It's not exactly that. But it's a good picture of how you and I got saved. And he was saved physically by faith. We know that because in uh, verse 6, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. He told him who was able to help him. And in verse 16 that we read, the last verse of this passage that we read tonight, the Bible says his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong. Amen. So that man believed uh, the word. And when you got saved, you got saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you heard the gospel, and you had to hear the, go the gospel of salvation in order to be saved, for it's the power of God unto salvation, everyone that believes it. But what a blessing it is to know that you are saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Saved is conditioned on faith. It's channeled by two Christians. God used uh, two Christians there uh, to get the man saved, and God uses tools today. And you may have, have had a number of people that fit in with your conversion that were involved in I got two grandmothers that they weren't on the scene when I got saved, but I really believe they had a, a part of leading up to me getting saved. And his, his deliverance was conditioned on faith. It was channeled by God using two Christians, and it was complete. Verse 7 says, And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Yeah. I'm glad that God can save a person yes. and save a person immediately. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now none of you got saved and quit everything that you were doing wrong and all of a sudden started doing everything right. If you ever hear somebody say that, you know that person's a liar. Yeah. Okay? Uh, that person, if they told you they don't sin anymore, that person's lying. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
But we, we ought to show a difference. But the fact is that, but, but the fact is that when you got saved, while you may not have turned into an angel, you did turn into a child of God. Yes. And that happened immediately. Right. You turned uh, to Jesus Christ in faith, and you went from damnation to salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. When you went from darkness to light. You went from a dungeon <coughs> to liberty. You went from despair to laughter. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm saying that it was complete. When you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, right then you were born again. Right. At, right then you could say your blood washed. Yeah. Right then you could say you're bound for heaven. Soon yeah. to leave the ground, won't be found at the trumpet sound. I'm going up in a single bound. Yeah. Third thing I want to point out to you is in verse 8. The man's delight. The man's delight. I don't know if you can sympathize with him, but he, he had been lame from birth, he had not been able. And then, one word, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he bleed. Yeah. Amen. And he could feel the difference. Mm -hmm. He had feeling in his legs. Yeah. Yeah. And he was delighted. Now, I know there's probably some old church folk, old fogey in that church. Because they're in every, I don't care if it's a, I don't care if it's a Jewish temple or a Mormon tabernacle. A somebody who does not appreciate somebody getting a touch from him. Yeah. Yeah. And they probably somebody that didn't appreciate the way that, but it sure did get a lot of people's attention yeah. with how he was delighted. Yeah. The Bible says, I mean, he never walked. And he just, God gave him the ability to do it right, right away. And he walked. And if I had time to illustrate it, I'd come in that door right down there. But he walked into the temple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he walked into the temple. Yeah. I realized that was odd. I realized he was odd. But I mean to tell you, if you had happened to you what happened to him, you'd be trying out things too. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to say amen. amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you would. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden, you know, these things that had not moved for a whole lifetime had strength in them, had blood flowing through them, and could walk. Yes, sir. He said he went into the temple walking Amen. and God. leaping. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and somebody says, we don't do that here. <laughs> and he could say back to him, you don't do that here, but you hadn't been lame all your life. That's right. That's right. Something wonderful happened to me. Yep. He was delighted. Listen, my friend. The more you get delivered from, the happier you're going to be. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why that it's better to be saved when you're five. You're going to be more delighted to be saved if you get saved when you're 50. Right. Yeah. Because the time you've turned 50, you have messed up a lot of people's lives, including your own, mm -hmm. if you're lost. And if God takes you 40, 50, 60, what, and saves your soul, you're, you remember, uh, folks have got time love, Joe Howe. Yeah. Joe Howe got saved. He's probably 65 years old, maybe. He's probably 65 years old, got saved, been a drunk all his life, and got saved. And you just had to, you just had to understand it was Joe. He was saved. If you came to Pine Bluff Baptist Church when he was coming, I don't care what your convictions are. You was getting hugged. I mean, you really, you'd have had to fight him off. Because old Joe Howe, he'd hug everybody. Male, female, dog, doesn't matter. He's, he's so glad he was saved. They told him in the hospital, they said that, that if he recovers, if he comes out of this, his brain is gone. But his brain wasn't gone. God got in there, did, did the work. The light. The, uh, he expressed his delight. Praising God. He was energetic in his delight, leaping, walking, and praising God. And he entered into the temple. Just like that he was as good as anybody else. He entered into the temple. And you know what? When you get saved, don't worry about what you used to be. Just yeah. thank God you ain't what you used to be. Amen. Thank God that God's done something. And if you can't say anything else, if you don't know how to explain it, just say, I got a touch from heaven. 
Last thing I'd like to mention to you is his declaration. We find his declaration in verses 9 <clears throat> through 11. His declaration was one of praise. The people saw him walking and praising God. And I want to say that not and, and God intends for everybody when you get saved, everybody to speak up. This is a part of service. It's not a part of salvation. And God wants you, after you're saved, the first thing He wants you to do is let this mouth flop open Amen. and start talking. <laughs> For it's written that whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. Believing on Him gives you eternal life and then you're supposed to confess Jesus Christ publicly. It's not part of your salvation. It's proof or fruit or whatever. A product of being saved. God wants you to confess Him after you've trusted Christ as your Savior. Yeah. And He did it. His, his declaration was one of praise. His declaration was public. The Bible says that all the people saw Him walking and praising God. And they were filled with amazement. And the Bible says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see. They saw Him. And God wants people to be able to see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. I'll say this declaration was one of praise. It was one that was public, and it was one that was powerful. In verses 10 and 11, the Bible says in verse 10, they were filled with wonder and amazement. Verse 11 says they were greatly wondering. And folks, it could be that maybe folks would be a little bit amazed at us if we would go ahead and take a stand for the Lord and do what God wants us to do and motivates us to do in our heart. If you're saved, the Lord's inside. And if you would go ahead and work out that which God is working in you, both willing to do of His good pleasure, it could be that you'll have some of your family say, whoa. And it might be that you might actually get their attention enough to where they'll want to know about your Savior. Won't you stand with me, please? Heads bowed. Maybe